Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today is an LED strip day or an LED strip time as you can guess from the title. Um, I have received a new product from Sonoff and if you follow my channel I have reviewed Sonoff LED strips before and they were called the L1 and now this is the L2. So what we got from Sonoff for IT is an enhanced version of their existing LED strip. And if I want to summarize the differences between the old and the new model, is that the new model, the controller itself, contains Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well. So if for any reason the Wi-Fi doesn't work, it can fall back to Bluetooth and then the EVLink application can automatically switch back to controlling the LED strips using Bluetooth. So if your internet goes down, you would still be able to control your LED strip using the EVLink application. The communication is just going to be Bluetooth instead of Wi-Fi. So you have to be sort of like close proximity to the controller to be in order to control it via Wi-Fi. And also the user interface has been changed. There are a few different modes that we are going to see later in this video. But after all, this is an RGB LED strip, not an addressable one, but the one which has a fixed color. And also it comes with an infrared remote, just like the previous version. Let me quickly do the unboxing and then finish with the parts first. So you can see everything on the screen now, what comes in the box. Um, the packaging is very similar to the previous one. So there is a big box which as you can see it says Wi-Fi Smart RGB LED strip or light strip and uh, it has basically three different parts. There is the LED strip and I've received a two meter version uh, which is the water resistant uh, type. So you can see the coating on the LED strip. So there is two meter version, five meter version and there is a water resistant version or the non-water resistant version. So you have these four different uh, types and and the one that I've got has this black uh, uh, sort of PCB material um, but I mean other than that these are just standard uh, RGB LED strips so if you have other LED strips at home or if you are buying it from different supplier because you want more LEDs or less or something else then you should be able to connect them to the controller you're also receiving a power adapter which is this one and the power adapter is uh, 12 volts and 2 amps and it comes with uh, separate plugs for US and UK and of course I'm using the European plug so they are interchangeable and finally you have the smart controller which is this small box here and it is very similar to the previous one you have the connector for the LED strip on one side you have power connector here and you also have this lead for the uh, infrared remote and you have the infrared remote, which is pretty much the same as before, and it runs on some coin cell. To be honest, I haven't even used this uh, remote. I haven't unpackaged it yet. And this is all that comes in a package. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug in this power supply. And I also started the EVLink application. And before I go into the details, I just want to get uh, the uh, initial setup uh, cleared first. So you pair this device with your EVLink application using the Bluetooth pairing. So you click on the big plus button and you select Bluetooth pairing. Um, the flashing indicator is actually going to be the flashing of the LED strips. And that's going to go into pairing mode uh, automatically once you power it on for the first time. Or if you need to pair it again anytime in the future, what you need to do is you need to press the on button and of course hold it uh, towards the infrared receiver and press it for five seconds. And then it's going to go into breathing mode, which means that the LED is going to flash. And then you click next and the uh, your phone is going to search for the Bluetooth devices. And actually it is appearing here, the CK and the ID, and you just click connect. But I have already added it to my EVLink application which you can see it here now and now I can control this device and as you can see if I am controlling it it automatically responds and what you can see here now is um, well I'm in my garage now and I wanted to go, uh, come here because there is a very poor Wi-Fi reception here but you can see the small Wi-Fi symbol that means that I am connected to the LED strip using Wi-Fi uh, I thought I would be you know, far away from my Wi-Fi router, so it automatically switches back to Bluetooth. But if that is the case, you would see a small Bluetooth icon here, uh, where you see the, you know, on the lower right corner. And then when you go into the details screen, it also gives you a message that try uh, connecting via Bluetooth, which takes like one second. 
But after that, the user interface is exactly the same. So let me cover the user interface. On the top part, you can uh, set the color. Below that, you can set the brightness. And then uh, after that, you have some presets and a couple of modes down here on the bottom. So let's cover the color first. By default, you have this color wheel and you can just click anywhere on the wheel and it automatically updates the colors on the LED strip. You also have the option, if you uh, click on the RGB buttons, to select the RGB colors manually. I mean, if you want a specific color, then you can do that as well and that would automatically update. You also have this icon here just below the Sonoff logo and that's going to change between the different color wheels. So if you have this color wheel, which is uh, the colors for warm light and cold light, so it goes like sort of like bluish all the way to like very warm light. And you have also have another option where, which is uh, scales of gray. And for some reason, it is actually, I mean, I think for the camera, it is looking a little bit more bluish than how blue it is for the naked eye. But actually, it is also a little bit blue for me. So it's not, you know, pure white with these uh, LED strips. And finally, you have this color wheel as well, which is pretty much similar to the first one. But you basically pick colors with maximum saturation. And of course, you have brightness control. So if you want to go all the way down to, let's say, 1%, then it's going to give you a very, very faint glow, which I think it would be actually quite nice for some sort of like backlight. I mean, I'm recording this at daytime, so I can't give you very, uh, you know, dark background or, you know, no ambient light, but I think this looks good and it still shows the colors. So uh, if you want some low lights, I think the 1% is actually going to work quite well. Let me go back to full brightness. So this is how you set the colors. And you also have some uh, option to set some presets. So it remembers some colors that you set previously. And also, you know, some of the different color wheels. And you also have these options to set, select from some classic colors. And as you can see, it just steps through the color wheel uh, to show you the main colors. Well, not purple, but it shows the main colors. Okay, and of course, you can go here. Oh, by the way, you could see that uh, I think it was losing the Wi-Fi connection, so it was switching back to Bluetooth momentary, but then it, it was going back to, it has gone back to Wi-Fi. Okay, so that was about setting the colors. We have a couple of options here. You can turn off the LED strip and you can turn back on. Of course, it would remember the last settings that you choose. You have the palette, which basically what you see on the screen. To be honest, I don't know why they have a separate color for that. You also have scenes, which are, well, it's different color modes where you can, um, you know, it has some colors and it cycles through them and it cycles through them in uh, different patterns. So some of the patterns are breathing patterns. Some of them are fade patterns. Some of them are going to be like, blinking ones and <laughs> the good thing about this there is also an option for DIY so you can create a DIY scene just like I did here and you can select the colors for DIY and then it's basically going to cycle through those colors and you can also specify whether you want the cycling as a strobe a breed a gradient or a pulse and to be honest it doesn't make a lot of sense for me because I'm not sure. So I, I wanted the colors to fade from one to another and actually none of them are actually the, you know, the proper fading. And if you see, I, I pick some, you know, warm colors, uh, red, orange and yellow, and still you can see some blue, definitely some sort of greens in the fade. So it is doing some weird fading. So you might not be able to get the exact thing that you want. And also what is strange for me is that you, I've set the speed to 3%. I wanted this to be very subtle, very slow, but still, as you can see, this is 3% speed. So it's a nice touch, but I don't think you would be able to get to the exact same effect that you want to, unless you want something really, really flashy, which then you can just have any of these and they would flash quite a lot. For example, you can see that uh, this is just, well, you can't customize the presets. You can change the speed and the brightness of that, but you don't know what actually settings they have. 
so you know if, if, if you like this one but slightly different colors you can't get the settings from these and then replicate in DIY but you can play around it's not that complicated so these are the scenes I'm not really sure if I, I, I to be honest I don't think I'm going to use these scenes I don't like flashing colors and talking about flashing colors the next one is the music visualizer and that's it so I talked about in the previous one again I I don't like these flashing ones uh, but here you have a couple of options as well so for example this responds to loudness basically and just sets random colors and this dynamic is is pretty much the same it just varies the effect how it changes between responses maybe the disco one is you know, it, it also fades back to black. So that's how it is different. And you can also set sensitivity. So uh, yeah, maybe you can give it a try if you have, if you fancy these effects, but I, I don't really. So let me go back to, let me just pick a color. So it goes back to the standard mode. And before I go back, I just wanted to go back to the main screen. Now you can see that it is connected via Bluetooth. And, uh, and then that's it. And the funny thing is when you are connected via Bluetooth, you see that next to the visualizer there is an icon which goes to the right and you can't press it you, you you're supposed to scroll these four icons here on the top but you can't because i think this is something that you can only access once you are connected via wi-fi so if you are using bluetooth you only have these set of functions so before i cover the last couple of options let me go into the settings so you click on the three dots and you can see that that's the name of the device you can rename it you can you know change the version um, you can update the version if you are connected to wi-fi or uh, if you are bluetooth if your phone is uh, close to the controller but i'm on, already on the latest version you can assign the room you can also share this device with other users uh, oh this whatsapp share is new i haven't seen this before but basically you create another evlink account and you can share the device and uh, next are two special settings for this device the first one is the Wi-Fi settings so when you set up the device for the first time you will communicate it via Bluetooth and then you come to the settings and you can specify the Wi-Fi settings so you obviously your phone is connected to the Wi-Fi that you want to the this LED strip to connect to you click on Wi-Fi settings you select your Wi-Fi and the password and you just click save and the device is going to connect to that Wi-Fi and then you would be able to connect it via Wi-Fi as well. So the next setting is also interesting and actually a quite nice setting is if you are using the uh, Sonoff provided LED strip, you just plug it in and it's going to work. But if you are using uh, another LED strip from a different maker, which have the RGB uh, inputs in a different order. So for example, here you can see that it shows uh, 12 volts. And so from the top 12 volts and GRB. Uh, so if you are using a different LED strip and your colors are slightly off, because they are using a different order of the colors you can actually change the order here so you can specify whether the first one is the red and then the green and the blue or any order so that's actually nice that they have included that and that's pretty much all there is in the settings and now because i'm connected to the device using wi-fi which then of course allows me to connect this device from anywhere so i don't have to be on the same network i can be on mobile internet as well if I scroll on the four icons on the bottom, now I have a couple of other options. And the two additional options that appear are the timer and the schedule. And this is exactly the same functions that we have seen before. So let's say if your you know, device is open, then, sorry, if your uh, LED strip is on, you can set a timer saying that uh, after half an hour, I automatically want this to turn off and that's a timer and in the schedule you can set like you know schedules that I want my LED strip to turn on at 8.45 on like every single day of the week and the action is on and off you can't set colors you can't set brightness you can't set anything else other than on and off so again it will uh, turn on uh, to the last setting that was used so if I do that if I save this one then oh my LED strip is going to turn on 8.45 every single day. Okay, let me just delete that. I don't want to do that. And that's basically the schedule and the timer. And this is how you control your LED strip. You can see now that we change back to the Wi-Fi mode and I also have an icon here so I can turn it on and off 
from the main screen. And finally, I want to talk about the scenes very briefly because there is not a lot that you can do in scenes. It is very similar how in the schedule you can just turn on the LED strip. You can't actually tell it to turn on to a specific color or brightness. So if I look at the triggers, you can select your L2 light and you can specify what should happen if it is turned on and off. Um, so you can't specify color or anything like that. And it's pretty much the same on the other side, on the action side. So you select smart device and L2 and again, you just have on and off. So you can't have a schedule that let's say you turn, you have a light switch which is going to turn on your strip uh, to blue and other light switch is going to turn it at green because it's just not possible in the screen. So unfortunately, I think it's probably available in the IFTTT integration, which means that if you want these extra features that you have to pay for the advanced account. So one of the paid accounts. So this is how probably EVLink would like to get some more money for these new features. But I think this is how much I wanted to cover uh, from this LED strip for now. If you are interested in this product, you will be able to find purchasing links in the video description. But I think that would be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.